In this video, we're going to look at arithmetic sequences. And for now, you can just view a sequence as a list of numbers. Uh, but later on, we're going to get a more formal definition of what they are. So the way I like to analyze sequences is I like to turn them into, or at least organize them, in a table. So I encourage you to do that as well. So I'm going to call the first column n, the second column f of n, and I'm going to put um, I'm going to put this list in the table, and I'm going to view the 1, 5, 9, 13, and 17 as my outputs. So I'm going to put them in this column. And my inputs, well, since the 1 is my first number, or first term, I'm going to call that term 1. I'm going to call the 5 term 2, the 9 term 3, etc. So now that I have it in a table, what I'm ultimately hoping to come up with is a rule that relates the input, or n, to the output f of n. So I'm going to put an n down here, and what I'd like to figure out is what is the general rule that connects the n column to the f of n column. And I've done this before in a previous video, but I want to kind of reiterate it because it's important. Uh, I want to plot these as though they're points. So over here I have a, a graph, or a grid rather, and I'm going to graph uh, this sequence here by plotting the points. 1, 1 is my first point, 2, 5, 3, 9, 4, 13, and 5, 17. Okay, and we know this would continue. What I want to point out is that we're looking at, uh, if you if you sort of notice the pattern of these points, it definitely uh, represents a linear relationship. So I'm going to write that above because it'll help us kind of connect it to things we've already learned in math. So this shows a linear relationship, and <clears throat> lines are lines are pretty easy to analyze because um, well, the slope is constant, so in this case, I can tell that my slope is 5 over 1, which again, I could also get by noting that, uh, that's a mistake, it's 4 over 1, so let's fix that. Right, I go up four every time I go up one in the uh, in the input column. So what that means is that the rule for this function is going to resemble y equals mx plus b. And since my slope is four, I'm going to write four n. And now all I need to have happen is that this rule needs to work for all my inputs and outputs. So when I plug in a one, I'm supposed to get out a one. And right now, if I plug in a one, I'm getting out a four. So if I need to get out a 1, I need to subtract 3. All right? And you can check that against the other ones, right? When I plug in a 4, I need to get out 13. And if you plug that into this rule, that's exactly what you get. So in the language of sequences, what we just came up with here, that is, that is called the explicit rule. So I'm going to write that below. This is the explicit, explicit rule. OK. Um, Sometimes we'd say it's like the closed form, so this is often used as well, closed form. So that would be f of n equals 4n minus 3. Um, what, one thing you should note about a, an explicit rule is that it's useful because it tells us how to get from input to output. Okay, It's one way of sort of um, describing the pattern of this sequence here. Right? If I want to know now the, the 50th number on this list, I can just plug in 50 for n. Okay. Now there are other types of rules we can come up with and you'll want to be familiar with them. So I'm going to make another column here and do something that seems strange, um, but it'll help you understand another idea um, which is important when you're analyzing sequences. So I'm going to make this column have this title, f of n plus 1 minus f of n. 
And so let's see if we can kind of figure out what this is saying. So I'm literally just going to plug in the n values into what I have here. So if n is a 1, then this term becomes f of 1 plus 1, which is f of 2. And if I plug a 1 in for that n, I'd get f of 1. So now let's go over to our list here. f of 2 minus f of 1, well that's just 5 minus 1, which is 4. Let's do one more. When I plug 2 in for n, I get f of 3 for that first value. And I plug it in for n in the second, I get f of 2. And so f of 3 minus f of 2 is, um, well that's 9 minus 5 and that's a 4. So hopefully you can see what this is saying. It's basically saying that if you take any term and subtract the one before it, you're always going to get 4. So I can just put a 4 down in every single row here. Now this is really the defining characteristic of an arithmetic sequence, and that is that the difference between each, uh, between two consecutive terms is a constant number. So because it's a number that's not changing, it's called the common difference. Common because it's always the same, and difference because if you subtract two successive uh, outputs, you're always going to get uh, um, this common difference. So the other thing uh, I want to get down before we end this video is that this column here, this third column, that has what's called the recursive rule. So the recursive rule for this particular sequence would be f of n plus 1 minus f of n is equal to 4. Now very often um, the f of n plus 1 is, is given by itself, so more likely you'd probably see it written like this. And what's special about a recursive rule is that it tells you how to get from output to output. Output to output. Because what if, if you look at the structure of it, what it's saying is that, well, if I, know the, um, if I know the second term, I can get the third term because it's just the second term plus 4. If I know the 99th term, I can get the 100th term because it's just the 99th term plus 4. So it's, it's telling us how to get from output to output. That's what recursive rules essentially do. Um, now, the one thing to keep in mind about a recursive rule is that this is the pattern between outputs, but you kind of you you do have to specify where to start. So you do have to kind of um, you have to specify what the first output is going to be. And in our case, the first output is a one. So a recursive rule is not just the pattern from output to output; it's also where to start. Okay, and that can have an effect on what your uh, your general sequence is going to look like. All right, so this is the bulk of what you'll want to know about arithmetic sequences. Um, and explicit, explicit rules, I just noticed it says explicit ruled, which is weird. Explicit rule. Um, on the next page, I'm going to give you a definition of, an arith of a sequence and an arithmetic sequence. So the technical definition of a sequence is that a sequence is a function, and so that explains why I, I created a table when I saw that list of numbers. It's a function whose domain is the set of non-negative integers. So non-negative integers are these numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, that's the domain. That basically means uh, the outputs are the numbers themselves, 1, 5, 9, 13, but the domain um, are these non-negative integers. Um, very often, just to, to give you a heads up, very often the um, we don't always start from the zero. We don't always start with zero as our first input. Often you might just see the list of positive integers as the domain. Okay, and it, it tends not to matter so much, um, but just so just keep that in mind. We can kind of be flexible and go back and forth. Now, in particular, an arithmetic sequence, such as the one we just listed. 1, 5, 9, 13, 17. Um, 
The sequence is in general arithmetic if the following conditions are met. So, the first condition is that there is a number d called the common difference and f of n plus 1 is equal to f of n plus that common difference okay for all n bigger than 0 so that's a that's the definition of a, an arithmetic sequence and what i want you to relate to an arithmetic sequence is a linear function so think think linear function